What is up YouTube? Today I'm coming back at you with another video, and this is a little bit of a different video. Today we're going to be looking at a specific part of my movie collection, and we're going to talk about um, some of the things in this part of my collection. What I like about them, what I don't like about them, and just, um, yeah, just going through it and just talking about it, because today we're going to be talking about Star Wars. Um, so I'm a pretty big Star Wars fan. I wouldn't say I'm the biggest Star Wars fan, admittedly. Um, it is one of my favorite sci-fi series, but it is not my favorite sci-fi series. Um, so I know I'm probably going to catch a lot of slack for that, but it is what it is. Um, but I do have quite a bit of Star Wars stuff. Not as many as, not as much as some people, but um, I am happy with all the Star Wars stuff I have. So we're going to basically go through look at all my Star Wars stuff, and, um, yeah. So, I haven't really thought about how I'm going to start this off yet. I guess we'll do, um, um, how do I want to do this? Okay, I think we'll just do, um, production date, or we'll just do the original series stuff first and then we'll go through other stuff, because I think the original series stuff is probably the most interesting to the vast majority of people. Um, so before we get into going through my Star Wars stuff, I suppose we should probably talk about my favorite and least favorite Star Wars movies. Uh, I'm not going to do like a whole list, I'm just going to kind of talk, say my top, we'll say my top three favorite Star Wars movies, and then I'll give my least favorite Star Wars movie, and then everything in between doesn't really matter anyway. So, uh, my favorite Star Wars movie, and this is going to be kind of controversial to some people, but uh, my favorite Star Wars movie is actually The Phantom Menace. Um, now, some of you may be kind of like slamming on your keyboards already, but um, hear me out. I, um, I like The Phantom Menace a, like a lot and not just for a nostalgic reason because it wasn't even the first Star Wars that I saw in theaters because my dad took me when I was a kid to see the uh, just before the Phantom Menace came out they re they re-ran all of the special edition um, original Star Wars trilogy in theaters and that was the first time I saw Star Wars in theaters I'd, I'd seen the original trilogy dozens of times before that on VHS both the special and original cuts but um, those were like my first introduction to Star Wars. But The Phantom Menace, I did watch in theaters when I was a kid as well. But that's not the reason why it's my favorite. Why it's my favorite is for the exact reason why most people really don't like it. I like political drama stuff. And I find it fascinating how much The, uh, the Phantom Menace fleshes out the po political structure of the Republic, and I find it entertaining, I just find that entertaining, but I, I know a lot of people don't, but um, I just find it interesting, the dynamic, and I find it a really great facet to world building, um, because it really explains that piece of, that information that it, that it, uh, that it uh, introduces in The Phantom Menace, uh, really helps further I don't know, I can't really think the words, but it, it like further explains the plot later on when it when you kind of figure out like why the Republic ended up going with the clone army and like the exception of the clone like the the Senate accepting the clone army as their military force and I just find that sort of stuff really fascinating and I enjoy watching that sort of stuff, which is also why Gundam is one of my favorite uh, sci-fi uh, series. Um, so I really like The Phantom Menace, and then also uh, I, I like all the other aspects of it. I think it has great set pieces. I think it has some of the best battle scenes out of any Star Wars. The droid army versus the Gungans is super, like, I mean, even ex just exclude Jar Jar, because I know a lot of people don't like Jar Jar. If you just ignore Jar Jar, that Gungan versus droid army is still a really cool set piece. And... Um, the uh, the space battle over Naboo at the droid control ship is really cool, um, and then you obviously have the the duel of the fates between Qui Gon uh, and Darth Maul and Obi Wan, and um, it's just a really fantastic movie. I, I think it's all around a good movie. Uh, the pod racing scene's fantastic. I mean, there's very little that I don't like about that movie. So um, 
yeah, I'll stop justifying my reasons for that. And then uh, my second favorite is the original Star Wars. Uh, absolutely love A New Hope. Um, I find it is probably the most flawless Star Wars movie. It is literally the perfect Star Wars movie. And I'm talking specifically about the theatrical cut, and I will get into that later. But specifically the theatrical cut is my second favorite uh, Star Wars movie. Um, and then the third favorite is Rogue One. I absolutely love Rogue One. It is such a good movie. And I, I'm sure most of you agree. Um, and then my least favorite Star Wars movie is uh, Episode 2, Attack of the Clones. Uh, and that is pretty self-explanatory. Um, so, let's go into my... I'm sorry I took so long going through that, but I felt I needed to defend my favorite Star Wars movie because I know I'm going to hear about it in the comments. Um, so, let's get into my Star Wars collection, shall we? So the first thing um, that we have here is the basis of my Star Wars collection, uh, the Star Wars Complete Saga, or as I like to refer it, the Incomplete Saga, um, because it is incomplete now. But um, this is um, the basis of my, uh, my collection. It's this cool art book version of the uh, 2011 Blu-ray series. Uh, it's got three extra bonus Blu-rays with tons of special features. I really love the design and packaging, and um, it's got tons of content in there. It is just a really great box set. Um, so this is the special editions of the movie, so you have the extended pod racing scene in Phantom Menace. You've got, um, oh gosh, you've got all the stuff that George Lucas did to the, A New Hope, uh, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, and then, um, and then all the other stuff that, that basically was changed. So I'll talk a little bit about the special editions because since this is my this is I think yeah this is my only copy of the, of the special editions. So I'll talk about the special editions. So when it comes to the special editions, I have mixed feelings. I, I don't outright hate all of it. Um, I do dislike some things, and I and I, I I like a little bit of it. So what do I dislike? We'll get all that stuff out of the way first. So. I dislike everything that was done to A New Hope. Um, absolutely everything that was done to A New Hope was completely unnecessary. I think that all of the changes that were added to Star Wars A New Hope literally ruins the entire pacing of the movie, and that is my biggest gripe. I feel like things just go, just sit around way too long on, with, with all the random stuff that doesn't add anything to the story, just random shots of nothing. like. Like, we don't need to see that much stuff when they're going into Mos Eisley on the, on the land speeder. Like, all that random stuff that's added in there is completely unnecessary. And that's literally my least favorite thing that has ever been added to Star Wars, was all the Mos Eisley crap. Because it's a, a solid, like, extra, like, almost minute of just nonsense. And um, th then you have, like, the giant dinosaur butt that goes right in front of the screen at that one part where they try to cover up that other R2 unit and just the rock that R2 hides behind, and, you know, Han's neck jerk that's like... Just all that random, unnecessary stuff, and there's just random added scenes that don't add anything. Like, the Jabba scene is, like, it's redundant. It's not needed. Ruins the whole pacing of the film. Everything that's added to A New Hope, I dislike. Um, so I'm, I'm not a fan at all of the Star Wars A New Hope special edition. Now, when it comes to Empire Strikes Back, I would say that's probably my favorite special edition release because it actually adds things that I think are good uh, and it improves on things in a meaningful way like the Cloud City windows are beautiful and some of the added extra scenes I think are good. Um, I, don't, I, I don't mind they changed Boba Fett's voice. I think it's a, it's a good continuity thing with the prequels. So I actually really like the Empire Strikes Back special edition. It's probably my favorite special edition. Return of the Jedi is sort of a toss-up. I like some of the things. I dislike some of the other things. Um, I would say overall, I would say it's a net positive on the special edition of Return of the Jedi. Uh, but there are some things that I really dislike about it. Um, which is w one thing I really want to say is, for the Return of the Jedi special edition, I really wish they would have added the deleted scene where Luke's um, tuning his lightsaber. I think that would have been just like a, a quick, cool little thing that would have been interesting. I, although I do understand why it's cut, because I could see that not really being that relevant, depending on where you place it in the film, I should say. But um, yeah, I, overall I would say I think the Return of the Jedi uh, special edition is okay. 
Um, in terms of the Phantom Menace, so the Phantom Menace is, I think the, no, there are some changes in Attack of the Clones as well. Um, the Phantom Menace, I think the extended pod racing scene is cool. I, I don't mind the extended pod racing scene. Um, I do think it goes on a little long. But my biggest issue is not so much like a complaint, it's just more of a personal problem. I watched the theatrical cut because the theatrical cut was only released on VHS. Um, and I watched that a lot growing up. And uh, so a lot of the lines and delivery was stuck in my mind and still is. And so some of the changes, they changed the dialogue around a little bit. And uh, it's very noticeable to me. Um, but overall, I think that the special edition of um, Phantom Menace is a, a good change. Um, Attack of the Clones, um, I just think is unnecessary. Like all the special edition changes for that, it was just unnecessary. They they jumbled around some edits, um, and um, I just think that they were better in the theatrical cut. Like basically, the Count Dooku escaping, I think, was done better in the theatrical cut. Um, I don't even know if you can watch that. Um, I'm not sure, um, but uh, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of the changes there. Uh, Revenge of the Sith basically has none, so. Don't have to talk about that. So sorry about talking about the special editions for so long, but I'm going to talk about everything in my collection because I don't have a whole lot. But all right, so the next thing in my collection is the theatrical cuts of Star Wars. So these are made. Um, these are the despecialized editions. Uh, these are custom box sets that I made for myself. Um, for those of you who know how to get the, the, the specialized editions, you can make them yourself as well. For those of you who can't, there's just Google it. There's tons of uh, tutorials on how to make. Uh, these but these are the original theatrical cuts as they were seen in the theaters. And this specifically is the one that I made this whole set for. This one is the best version of this movie. It, it, this, the pacing is perfect. The story is perfect. The act, like everything about this is like the best. Like just like, oh, I, this is such a good cut of the movie, and I don't understand why the special edition of this does what it does so I, I this is this is what you really want to watch if you want to watch the original so um, yeah the original Star Wars then I've got Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi all the theatrical cuts as they were seen in theaters or on the um, if you have the pre special edition VHS release um, but these are in better quality than that so all right and then the uh, the last of the original trilogy stuff and prequel stuff that I have is this next thing. So this is uh, Star Wars Revisited. This is a another cut of the original movies. Um, this is the only the first two. They don't have, um, this is a fan edit, and they don't have uh, Re uh, Return of the, <clears throat> excuse me, they don't have Return of the Jedi done yet. But uh, these are the first two movies, and essentially what these do are try to basically make this Star Wars, this, they try to basically remake the Star Wars Special Editions into what they should have been. Um, so they take out all the dumb stuff that they added, all the dumb like random land speeder scenes and the, and the R2 hiding behind a rock and just random stupid stuff that they added to the original New Hope. And then they added stuff that's meaningful. Like there is a whole like two minute scene or two or three minute scene of extra battle footage of over the Death Star, which I think is super cool. And it's super well done. He redid the uh, the TIE Fighters flying in scene uh, over the Death Star and added like way more TIE Fighters to make it feel like a more massive battle. He added more ships flying around in the background during the Death Star fight. And it's just over, he redid some of the special effects too, like um, some of the, um, the digital panels actually have like holograms coming up now. It just, it's a really good edit. Um, I prefer these over the uh, actual special editions, but I have obviously haven't seen Return of the Jedi yet because that was not done yet. But these are really cool, definitely worth checking out. Um, and they each have their own disc, so um, really cool edit of of those. Um, and they're in they're in uh, I think they're in 720p, not 1080p. The full 1080p like the Blu-rays are though. So yeah. So, let's move on to other Star Wars stuff. So, before we get into the sequel Disney stuff, let's get through these two things. Uh, so I also have the Star Wars Holiday Special. Um, yeah, the Holiday Special is pretty bad. 
Uh, the only thing I really like about the holiday special is the animated section with Boba Fett and all that stuff. I think that's passable, but all the other stuff is pretty much pointless. Um, the only reason I got it is because, you know, it's the holiday special. It's infamous. I have to get it. Um, that's what the inside looks like for those of you who are curious. Um, but yeah, I don't really watch this a lot, but I uh, have it in the collection. And then uh, I also have the two Ewok movies on DVD. Um, they're made for TV movies. I actually like these movies. They're not like the best thing in the world. They're kids movies, but I actually enjoy watching these movies. They kind of remind me of like, um, uh, sort of like Willow in a way, in terms of like, just like the special effects and sort of like the story and atmosphere reminds me more of Willow. Um, so I really, really uh, like this, like these movies. So they're all, I mean, they're not the best, but you know, it is what it is. Got the two Ewok movies, quite enjoyable. All right, so now let's move on to the Disney uh, Star Wars stuff. So I've got all of these in some sort of special edition or another. So we'll go through, I only have one copy of each, so we'll go through uh, in order. So the first one I got is probably my least favorite edition that I have, but it's the one I went with. And I have the Target Special Edition of The Force Awakens. I went for this one because it came with extra special features. Um, but originally this was supposed to be, um, I don't know if anyone has ever seen the Diamond Lux uh, packaging that Warner Brothers was doing with their like clear plastic cases. Uh, I have Batman in one of those and I absolutely loved those cases. And this was supposed to be that, but I get the last minute Target bailed out and had to do something to make their special edition. So they put it in cardboard instead, but with the same sort of layout. So it's literally what the Diamond Lux would have been, but in worse packaging. So not a huge fan of this one. I, I pre-ordered it before they switched it to the cardboard, but I really wish that this would have been like the actual Diamond Lux packaging, because that would have made this such a cool set. But uh, yeah, this is the version of Force Awakens I have. I think The Force Awakens is probably my favorite of the three uh, sequel movies. Um, so, yeah. Um, the next one that came out was Rogue One, I believe. Yeah, Rogue One. And so the version of Rogue One I got was, I think this is also the Target version of Rogue One. So I really, really like this version of Rogue One. So this is like the Target exclusive box set. It comes with changeable covers. Uh, I think it originally had Jin Erso on there, but it has like four or five cards that you can slide in here and change the cover. And then it's got all sorts of really cool artwork on the inside as you fold it out. And um, it's got ex the extra bonus disc and it's just a, it's a cool set. Um, I have other, um, I have other uh, movies that have this sort of style of packaging as well. I almost forgot to put this back in here. So. Oh, this one. This one is hard to refold is the only thing because these cards kind of tend to slide around. All right, there we go. Let me just, there you go. So yeah, uh, that's my copy of Rogue One. Uh, Rogue One, like I said, probably my third favorite Star Wars movie. Um, it's a super cool movie. I really like this movie a lot. Um, so definitely cool to have this edition of it. Um, yeah, it's Blu-ray. I don't know if you guys caught that one. All right, the next movie that came out was this one, and this is the Best Buy edition of uh, The Last Jedi. Last Jedi is pretty divisive, so some people really like it, some people don't. I don't. I'm indifferent about it. I'm. I, I'm not. I'm pretty indifferent about the whole sequel trilogy, to be honest. There, I don't really watch them that much, but I do have the Steel Book. Steel Book's really cool for this movie, though. Like that is a super cool Steel Book. And uh, the inside, for those of you who are curious. And then uh, after that is uh, another one that I actually really enjoyed. And I think this one got unnecessary hate. I think this is actually a pretty good uh, Star Wars movie. And that is Solo. I got the Best Buy steelbook of this one as well. Um, this one's 4K, I think. I think Last Jedi is 4K also. But yeah. Um, that's the inside of that. 
I actually really liked Solo. Um, I thought it was probably one of the better Disney movie, Disney Star Wars movies, but um, that's the edition I got of that. And then lastly, um, I got the Walmart exclusive edition of The Rise of Skywalker. Um, I really like this set. It matches my other big uh, box sets, and it, it's a unique packaging. I like the unique uh, packaging uh, edition. It's got magnets in it to hold it shut. It opens up like that. You've got this fold-out artwork here, and it sort of folds out sort of similar like to the Rogue, the Rogue One uh, box set. So I really like that. It's a super cool set. Really cool artwork. Um, I actually liked Rise of Skywalker. That was pretty good. Um, not the best. I think the, the whole trilogy was just kind of unplanned, but um, decent. But yeah, so that's all of my uh, all of my Star Wars collection. I know it was kind of a long video, and I talked a lot about certain things and not a lot about certain other things. But if you want to hear more about a movie that I didn't talk about, leave me a comment in the comment box below, and I'm more than uh, happy to talk about more Star Wars stuff. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.